and welcome back to Healing Gems. Thank you for joining me again today. So today's video we are going to talk about how to use EFT tapping, meridian tapping um, is another word for it, emotional freedom technique is the full um, name for it, to help with things like chronic fatigue, chronic pain, um, autoimmune illnesses, um, Lyme disease, you know, Crohn's, all those long COVID, all of those kind of things. So syndromes that we sort of like, or, you know, we get given labels for, which is like a collection of different symptoms and sensations in the body. So before we get started, I want to ask a massive favor. If you could please subscribe to my channel, I'm trying to reach a thousand people um, in order to stop adverts. Um, I don't do this to make any money. Um, I just do this to help people. So I know there's ads that pop up in between meditations, which is quite highly annoying. So it will be great if I can reach that amount of people in order to be able to turn the ads off um, from, from YouTube. Okay, so with that aside, we're going to talk about EFT tapping. We're going to do a little session here and now as well. Um, I love EFT. It, were, it has been a major part of like my healing journey. Um, I studied to become an EFT practitioner about four or five years ago. Um, and I've really started now to use it in so many different aspects of my life, not just like healing, but like, you know, in everyday life situations and scenarios, because it can really help. So meridian tapping or work around the meridians has been around for years and years and years. It's like an ancient Eastern um, healing technique, which has, you know, been used for a long, long time, but it's only now that Western medicine is starting to catch on to this and realizing that it has significant um, healing properties. So it might seem odd to people that tapping on a bunch of meridian points around the body um, is going to be able to help physical ailments. Um, but how the EFT tapping works is it, it helps to change your patterns in your nervous system. So, you know, you're sending different messages to your brain and to your body and to your nervous system a little bit like brain retraining really um, in order to take it out of a certain state which is generally fight or flight when you are you know in a situation of having chronic fatigue autoimmune etc your body is stuck in this like fight or flight um, situation and your body is continually pumping out cortisol and adrenaline so it doesn't give your body time to get into the rest and relax state, you know, state, your parasympathetic state, and heal. It doesn't give yourself time to do that. So EFT really helps to move from this sympathetic state to this um, parasympathetic state. And with EFT, we go towards the emotions, we go towards the symptoms, and we go towards our negative beliefs. Because a lot of the time we spend so much time trying to resist our body, we try and pretend that you know we're okay when we're not. We, um, you know, suppress thoughts that we think we shouldn't be having. Those thoughts, you know, I, we have beliefs, strong beliefs, deeply held beliefs that aren't true about the illness. Like, I'm never going to get better. Um, you know, my body can't cope with doing X, Y, and Z. Um, you know. As I get older, I've got no hope of healing, you know, and all of these beliefs are so, so heavy. Imagine walking around thinking these things all day, every day, and some of it is unconscious, you know, you're not even aware of it because you're thinking them so much, it's just become like everyday norm to you to think such awful, heavy things. But take a healthy person, if they were to start thinking these things, they would be like, wow, that's a really heavy, deep, dark, you know, unhelpful thought. And then they would probably start to experience um, being in fight or flight all the time because they're having these continuous thoughts that put you 
in a state of survival you know you're constantly fight it's almost like you're constantly fighting for your life you're constantly fighting to be able to do whatever you want to be able to do you're you know it, it is like this all the time with a chronic illness you are fighting your own self and this is one of the biggest things that keeps us stuck fighting our own mind fighting our own body and therefore you know we need to try and get out of that state so EFT really helps us to go towards our fears go towards the symptoms you know nothing is off limits here and usually find you know when people say facial fears they start to dissolve and then we can replace them with more helpful thoughts, maybe more truth thoughts, you know, thoughts that are actually true that we can't see right now because we're stuck in this really deep, dark place of constantly thinking negative things about our body, you know, not wanting to be in our body, hating our body, berating our body. So you can see how all of this creates pressure and stress into the body, into the nervous system, and it doesn't give ourselves time to recover and to, and to be happy. Um, some people do experience, like when they go on holiday, like, you know, they get into a bit of a more relaxed state and they feel better. Um, but, you know, as soon as you're back to like fighting your body, worrying about your body, um, you know, just constantly being in this hypersensitive state of thinking I can't do this because my body's gonna react and I can't do that because last time I did it, I was in bed for a week. And, you know, it's these thoughts and beliefs that create the cells to vibrate at a certain frequency. We, we become what we think. And I know that sounds a bit woo woo, but actually science actually proves this. I think it's called epigenetics. Um, but you know, maybe you are a disposition, um, you know, you've got genes that disposition you to a certain illness or um, condition. That doesn't mean that you're hundred percent going to get that condition. It's when those genes get turned on that the, the condition appears. So those genes can turn off and the condition can go. So all of this is very real. You know, none of this is saying like, because you, you know, have this thought and it's all in your head, none of that is saying that. These are very, very, very physical, real conditions where your body is producing chemicals and hormones and, you know, all of these things, muscles tight, you know, blood vessels constrict. Um, so what is happening is very real in the body. So no one is saying that that's not happening. Um, but the good thing is we can use EFT to start to release these worries, these thought patterns, these beliefs, these symptoms, uh, these emotions, um, in order to start to get better. Okay, so I know that was quite a lot. So we're gonna do some EFT tapping now. Um, so how it works is you can start off with, when you do this in your own time, you can tap on various things. So I'll just give you the options here, but today we're, we're trying to do a bit of everything. If you, literally do not know how you are feeling you can just start by going inwards closing your eyes feeling whatever you feel in your body and start with the physical symptoms so maybe it's a headache maybe it's a pain maybe it's a pulsing or burning or whatever it is focus on that first and where do ef tapping around the symptom you know what it feels like when did it first appear um you know, how does it come up? You know, does it come up in certain times in your life when you sit down, maybe when you stand up, maybe when you do an activity, that kind of thing. Um, and then we can then move on to the emotions. And generally the emotions around chronic illness are things like fear is massive. Fear keeps us stuck, absolutely. You know, we we just end up in this state where we are afraid to do anything and we need to get out of that. So fear, you know, anger, frustration, sadness, you know, these are all um, emotions that keep our bodies in this hyper vigilant state. Um, we're not processing um, things from the body, our muscles become tight, you know, so the emotions really, really do help. So for example, the other day, I just got a pain that just randomly started coming in my side. 
And I was like, what's that about? And I tuned into it, um, I had a cry, and I released some fear that I was feeling and worry that I was feeling. And it was like, the pain went like within an hour. Now that doesn't always happen, you know, that it goes straight away, um, because that would be great if it did. But, you know, I had been holding in a lot of emotion, hadn't really been um, acknowledging how I was feeling. I was trying to put on a brave face. I had just had an operation. So, you know, I was trying to pretend that everything was all right. And, you know, I wasn't worried about the genuine anesthetic and things like that. So I've been holding a lot in and after a really good cry and releasing, you know, these emotions of fear, the pain went. And I was like, this is amazing. So this is what spurred me on to do this video because I know that this stuff can help. And I know that, you know, with consistency, you know, you can start to release and let go of a lot of this stuff and things will start to change. So we've done the physical, we have the emotional, and then we have the thoughts. So the mental, so we have thoughts that we have about ourselves, thoughts that we have about our body, thoughts that we have about our illness, beliefs that we have about our situation. Now, beliefs that, you know, generally when you have a chronic illness are things like, I'm never gonna get better, um, I'm different to other people, I'm getting older so it's going to become harder, um, you know, this, I've tried everything, um, I'm an exception to the norm, um, you know, all of those kind of things are beliefs that keep us stuck. Or things like one that I have quite a lot is, if I do X, Y and Z, I'm going to feel ill for X amount of time or days. And I started doing a lot of tapping on that actually, and it was, it's, it's just short of a miracle of like, I went from not being able to do much to spending two hours in the garden and gardening and weeding and all of that. And I kept stopping and addressing this illness um, and addressing this thought of, you know, if I carry on, I'm going to get ill. If I do more than 15 minutes, I'm going to be in bed for a week, you know, all of that kind of thing, you know, so even though we do say like EFT in these sessions, do it during the day. When something comes up, literally you can tap, I'll show you a few discrete tapping points you can do during the day. Just tap on it there and then, you know, you can say it in your head, you don't have to say it out loud. You can just, you know, address whatever comes up in the moment and breathe. Okay, right, so I think I've talked enough. Um, so we are going to do an EFT tapping session. So get comfy. I want you to just close your eyes first of all. Take a nice deep breath in and sigh out through the mouth. And then you can pull your shoulders up towards your ears and again breathe in and release with a <sighs> one more time breathing in and relax and soften your body now it's good to do breaths like that as we go through the EFT tapping session anytime you feel like you need to dispel air you need to yawn you need to move, you know, just listen. It's your body getting rid of and discharging all of this trapped energy and emotion within the nervous system. Okay, so if you haven't done tapping before, we always start with the uh, karate chop point, tapping here, or you can do both if you feel like you want to tap on both. I prefer doing it like this. So we're just gonna start with going into a physical symptom, because that's sometimes the easiest thing to start with, it captures our attention. And you can close your eyes and do this, sometimes it's better because you can go deeper into whatever you're feeling. So you can just replace the symptom or the sensation that I say with whatever you are feeling. So even though I'm feeling this heaviness in my body, and it feels like a heavy weight. It feels like it's pinning me down. And I've had it for a long time. I am open 
to choosing something new. I am open to feeling lighter. I am open to my body changing positively and healthily. But even though I've had this sensation for a long time, it started when, now you can fill out in the XYZ, um, it started when I caught a virus and it stresses me out. I just feel scared by it. I feel annoyed by it. I feel pissed off by it. It stops me doing what I want to do. Maybe I can be open to choosing a new way of looking at this. Maybe I don't need to fight it anymore. Maybe I can just allow it to be there and know that my body has the capability to feel light and energized and healthy and well. Deep breath in and out. Even though I have this heavy burden in my back and my muscles feel so tight. It stresses me out. Sometimes I don't even know why it's there. I just get so angry by it. I get saddened by it because it stops me doing things that I want to do. It feels like it's never going to go away. But what if my body could start to feel light and energized and healthy and have the ability to do anything that I want to do in life. I can be open to that. Like deep breath in and out. So we tap through the points. We start here, just on the eyebrow point. This heaviness in my body. Again, you say whatever you're feeling. This sensation in my body. This heavy sensation in my body freaks me out. I'm consciously always looking out for it. Worried that it's going to be there when I wake up. Worried that when I overdo things that it's going to get worse. It just feels so heavy. My muscles just feel so tight. My muscles just feel so constricted. It feels like I've had this for ages. It feels like it's been here forever. Forever since I caught that virus anyway. It feels like it's never gonna go. It feels like no matter what I do, I can't shift it. I just feel so annoyed by it. I feel so frustrated by it. I just get so angry that this is happening to me. Breathe in and out. <sighs> what if I could be open to my body feeling lighter, healthier, stronger? What if I can change the way I think about this sensation and my beliefs around it. What if that could have an impact on the physical sensation itself? What if changing the way that I react to this physical sensation could help make it dissipate or even or just even lessen in intensity? Breathe in and out. What if my thoughts about this, that it's never going to go, I'm going to be stuck with it forever, that this is so unfair, 
What if all these thoughts are not true? What if the opposite is true? That my body is a healing machine. That my body is absolutely capable of getting better from this. What if my body can just be okay with having this for right now, but be, be aware and know that things will change. I will heal. Other people have. And I am getting better and better every day. And that this EFT tapping lock, however strange it seems, is going to help me. Okay, stop there, breathe in and out. So you might have found that the intensity of the sensations um, goes up by doing this, or you might feel that they come down. Sometimes when we go into the problem, when we go into the fear, when we go into um, the problem, you know, the sensations, we can increase our fear of them initially. So you might have found that the number, you know, your intensity goes up, or it might have come down, or sometimes what happens is the sensation moves somewhere else. Uh, but all of these are good signs that things are shifting, that things are moving, and that things are happening. And if you find yourself yawning a lot, this is your nervous system trying to relax itself. This is your nervous system trying to regulate itself. It is a really good sign. Okay, so we did touch a little bit on the emotional side there, um, as well as the physical. But you know, you can you can go back and you can go more into the physical. Um, you know, really describe the um, sensations in a lot more detail. You know, you can give them a colour. Some people like to do that and visualise them. You know, you can do all of that. So we're going to go on to the emotional um, part of the um, sensations. Well, how the sensations make you feel um, emotionally. Okay, so tap in on the side of the hand. Deep breath in and out. Even though when I feel these sensations, I feel so much fear. Even though I get so scared that these sensations are here or that they're going to arise when I do a certain activity or when I wake up in the morning that they're just going to be there again. And this fear is so intense. It makes me feel, and you can say how the fear makes you feel, frightened, on edge. Don't know what to do with myself, feeling physically sick, constant worry, and I just feel powerless, and I just feel hopeless when this happens. Deep breath in and out, <sighs> these are really heavy emotions to process. But even though I feel all these heavy emotions in my body, I choose to know that things will get better. I choose to believe that I can heal from this just like other people have. And I choose to allow myself to feel lighter emotions, like hope, like possible possibility that I can do this. even though I just feel all of this frustration at myself. Sometimes I hate my body so much, I would do anything to get rid of it and change it. Just fighting myself all the time, hating my body all the time, getting angry at my body all the time. I have so much anger at myself for getting into this situation, for overdoing it and ended up in this situation again. I just feel so angry. I just feel angry and powerless and frustrated. And again, where do you feel that? Like, and I can feel it in my stomach. I can feel it in my chest. I can feel this tenseness in my shoulders when I tune into all of those emotions. I choose to breathe. 
Breathe in and out. I choose to breathe. I choose to relax. And I choose to know all of this will pass. Because I'm doing EFT now. And I'm processing these emotions. And I am open to feeling hopeful, happier, excited about the future and what it will bring. And I'm open to processing these emotions and feeling them because I understand every time I suppress an emotion, this is what causes the issues. It's okay to feel fear. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to feel all of those things. The problem occurs when I suppress them. So now I am open to feeling them, every single one of them. Even if that means I cry, even if it means I shout and scream and I don't punch a pillow, but I will feel these emotions and get them out. And I am open to feeling better and better and better. Okay, I got a point. <sighs> All of this fear. All of this fear. All of this fear. It feels so intense. It feels so heavy. It feels like it's never going to go away. Breathe in and out. I just feel like it feels, it overtakes my body sometimes. It makes my body clam up. It makes my muscles go tight. It makes me feel like I can't move properly. It makes me feel like I'm stuck. All of this fear. All of this fear is so intense. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to die from it. Sometimes I feel so scared. I feel like I can't move. I feel like my body is just frozen with fear and I'm too scared to do anything. And then I get angry at myself for being like this. I get angry at myself. I get angry at my body. I get angry. I can't control my body like other people seem to be able to. I get angry that I've lost out on my life. I get angry that I can't spend time with family, friends as much as I want to. I get angry that I can't do sports and exercise like I want to or work or go for walks. I just do normal things. <sighs> then I just get really sad that this has happened to me. This sadness of all the things that I've lost. Maybe I've lost friends and family along the way. This sadness that I've lost myself. This sadness that I'm not the person I used to be. <sighs> this immense sadness. And then this frustration and powerlessness and hopelessness. Sometimes it feels like I've climbed into this deep dark well that I can't get out of and I don't know how and I've tried everything and that's what's so frustrating. <sighs> and I can feel this frustration in my chest, in my head, in my belly. I hate it. Sometimes I hate myself. I hate myself for being like this, for not being able to rectify the problem. I hate my body for having such lack of control. <sighs> Keep going. I know this is difficult. These are big emotions. <sighs> you know what? I'm just going to feel whatever I feel. I'm just going to go with it and I am going to be all right because what if by feeling these emotions, by allowing them to pass through me, 
that actually this is the route to healing. This is the route to getting better. Okay, breathe in and out. Give yourself a bit of a hug. So it's very difficult to say some of these things um, about ourselves and what we're feeling and acknowledge that we think and feel these things. So be kind to yourself. You know, you can take it very slowly at first if you find, you know, it brings up too much. Then, you know, go back maybe to the physical symptoms rather than the emotions. But tuning in every day to how you are feeling, not denying how you're feeling, is really going to help you. You know, because these things need to come up and out for you to feel lighter, for you to feel healthier. And, you know, if you've had an illness for like chronic fatigue for a long time, you know, one session of tapping isn't going to um, cure you. But with every session you do, um, you will notice a difference. Like you will start to feel lighter and you will start to feel more hopeful and you will start to understand how all of these things are playing into keeping you stuck. Okay, so last one then, and again, you don't have to do all these in one session, you could break these up, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we're going over here. So, thirdly, our thoughts and beliefs about our illness um, and how these can keep us stuck, we're going to do some work on that. So, you might want to take a bit of time here just to tune in and really feel or get to grips with what your beliefs about the illness are but common ones are things like um you know i'm going to be ill forever i can't do this um you know if i overdo it i'm going to get sick um those kind of thoughts and beliefs that you know i'm different to everyone else there's no hope for me um or a belief that I don't believe that EFT will work for me, um, that all of this mind-body um, stuff is nonsense. You know, that might be a, a belief that you, that you have. Um, so take a bit of time to think about what your beliefs are. Um, I know a big one for me was like, you know, oh, if I overdo it, I'm going to get sick. Um, if I go out into the garden for five minutes more than what I think that I can do, I'm going to get ill. And by telling myself these things, well, what happened? Exactly that. Um, and, you know, things like, but I became so scared of viruses um, that, you know, I would freak out every time someone um, came near me who had a cold, who had um, any kind of, you know, sort of virus-like symptom. I would get so, so scared that I was gonna get it um, and that I was gonna get really ill. So it might be something like that, um, depending on what your experiences are, depending on what got you into your situation in the first place. So we're going to just do a bit of tapping around these beliefs. Okay, so take a big breath in and out. Tapping on the karate chop point. Even though... I don't believe that I can get better. Other people have, I, I can see that, but I'm different. I've tried everything and nothing works. I'm going to be stuck like this for the whole of my life. And I'm not sure actually I can handle that. <sighs> what if I could be open to something new? What if I could be open to believing that it is possible that I can heal? What if I could be open to believing that I'm pretty capable, just like everybody else, to heal my body? And quite quickly as well. Even though it can't happen for me happens to other people but I've been ill for so long you know I've had fill in the blank chronic fatigue for 10 years 
not possible for me. And the older I get, the worse, you know, it's, the, whole, the harder it's going to be for me to heal. But what if, actually that's not true. What if ageing means I use my experiences and my knowledge to be a healthy and vibrant version of me? What if I can be open to this EFT lark and this mind and body ideas that what I think, what I feel, what beliefs I have, all have an impact on my body. And therefore, if I address these three things, then healing is possible. It happens for other people all the time. There's no reason it can't happen for me. Breathe in and out. Even though I'm not sure this EFT malarkey even works. I mean, how can tapping on the side of my hand and parts of my body actually make any difference? What I've got is a real physical condition. This isn't going to work. I don't see how it's going to work. But what if I can understand that EFT and meridians have been used for thousands of years for healing people when they didn't even know anything about the scientific um, side of it? What if I can be open to understanding that some people have healed some from some horrific illnesses where they haven't been able to walk, where they haven't been able to move their body properly, where they've been bed bound, where their life has literally disappeared from them. And they've come back fighting stronger and healthier than ever. And what if that could happen to me? Okay, tapping on the eyebrow point. <sighs> I can't do this. I'm different to everybody else. My condition, my symptoms, they're just not the same as those people that have healed. And in fact, maybe those people that have healed didn't even have chronic fatigue. Maybe they had something else. I'm not sure I can do this. I don't know if I believe in it. I don't know if I've got the willpower. I don't know if I've got the commitment to do this every day. I just feel like I'm going to be ill forever. Because I've been ill for so long already. And I don't understand how this tapping is going to work. But what if I could be open to at least trying it anyway? What happens if I could be open to trying it, to giving it a go? I mean, what have I got to lose? I haven't got anything to lose. Only th things to gain. So this belief that I'm going to be stuck with this, that I have no control over my body, that I have no control over my thoughts, Perhaps I can be open to realising that is not true. Perhaps I can be open to feeling hopeful that this EFT will work. Perhaps I can be open to a new way of being, a new way of thinking, a new way of expressing myself in the world. Not believing everything I think. And actually thinking, what if the opposite was true? Maybe I can go through my day when I have a, a thought or a belief pop up that I can't do this. 
that it's not possible for me. My situation is different. Perhaps I can just acknowledge that, feel that, and know that what happens if the opposite of that is true? What if that is not true for me? What if I can heal myself? What if it is possible? And have hope and faith and trust in my body, in me. And instead of fighting against myself, instead of hating myself, berating myself, know that I am strong, capable, and you know the fact that I'm even sitting here doing this EFT right now shows I am open a little bit, shows that I am willing to explore new ways of getting better. So all these deeply held beliefs of like, if I go and do this activity, I'm going to feel ill, I'm going to feel symptoms. What if that is not true? No, I'm not saying go and hike up a mountain and find out. But start with a small activity and let myself know that doing this activity is perfectly safe. Doing this activity is actually good for me. Doing this activity is fun and exciting and beneficial so every time you catch yourself believing thinking if I do this things are going to go south things are going to go badly stop breathe and what is the opposite what if the opposite was true okay deep breath in and out So if you're in public or around people, obviously, you know, you're not going to do the full EFT tapping, but you can either just gently tap on the sternum and say something, or even more discreetly is the side of the thumb. You can just tap on the thumb there. There's a meridian point there. Or you could do it this way. Or any of the fingers, really, if you're sitting with your fingers under the desk. And just in your mind, go into the thought, emotion, sensation, breathe, relax. What if the opposite was true? Okay. So please put in the comments, like, any um, thoughts that came up, you know, any uh, revelations that you might have had what you um, think that you're going to tap on in your own time. You know, make a list of all these beliefs that you have and go through them. Some of them are going to be really strong. Um, but, you know, bit by bit, we can start to unprocess them. And remember, try and do EFT in the moment. So I always do it in the morning because um, that's when I find that I'm feeling a lot of things. Um, some people like to do it at night as well to help them get to sleep and to calm the body. Um, but generally throughout the day, if something comes up, if you feel something, you know, you can either do the whole EFT um, sequence if you're able to, or you can just discreetly do it, you know, just tap on the collarbone points if you want, or here, this is quite a good um, tapping point for fear, you know, so a lot of fear that comes up, we can just tap on our sternum um, here. So anyway, let me know what you thought. I know this is like a longer video than I usually do, but um, I felt like it was going to be able to teach you how to do this yourself um, in any given moment, um, in any given moment of the day. Um, and I think you'll find it helpful. So any questions, let me know. Hope this was helpful. Give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye. Namaste.